Hello, everybody. Well, I'm the Outback Al. I'm Hot for Justice. I'm Yin and Young. I'm Chibi New. And I'm NV Jitters. Yee. And we're back with Lucid Nine. Uh, let's explain something. I'm not going to be the narrator today. We, we, uh, Envy needs a, a thing, so he's going to be our Bob Saget to my Ted Mosby. <laughs> <laughs> The whole thing before, you, yeah, I'm not going to get into it again. We're, <laughs> we're back at Lucid Nine. We're at a theme park. Have you, do you know what's going on? Yes, I, okay. I know it. I've been watching your guys' series. Okay. Diligent fan. Diligent fan. Wow, we have a lot of saves. Not really a lot of saves, actually. I think you guys only have like two events left. Yeah. Okay. I thought we did it. Oh, we didn't do everything. Okay. So, the tech showcase or the Ferris wheel? Ferris wheel should be last because that's where they want us to meet up, I think. Okay, so the tech showcase. We will go to the tech showcase and see what happens. My eyes are drawn to a large, oddly shaped building. Can you sound like Bob Saget? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I wish I could. Uh, kids? Kids, my eyes were drawn to a large, oddly shaped building at the center of the map. It's clearly the biggest attraction in the park. This could possibly be how we meet the mother. <laughs> I feel like we're mixing references because I thought we were going with like a community vibe. We were. That's you. Oh, right. I'm Yama. <laughs> what exactly do they have the, at this tech expo? You mean, what don't they have? You can pretty much find every Lemniscate device on display there, even their new tech that hasn't been released yet. Considering the building's size, I can see how they can accommodate it all. It says here they're holding some kind of lottery drawing for weed? <laughs> I double checked. Oh, no, no, it's not weed, it's a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> how many references do we make? I double checked to see whether I read that correctly. Surely they don't mean what I'm thinking, do they? Kids, you shouldn't do this kind of thing, so uh, we're just gonna call it eating a sandwich. <laughs> what? eating a sandwich. Why would they be giving that away at a drawing? I'm puzzled as well. Someone might explain to me what this sandwich is. <laughs> well, WEED is just an acronym for Wall Electric Energy Director. It's a new Lemniscate cell phone that can run on power from a wall socket even without a battery. So it's a phone. That sounds like an underwhelming <laughs> future to be to be so hyped about. We should go. This is an opportunity to introduce you to the world of technology, Yama. I'm sorry. Did they just invent a phone that plugs into a wall? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're going backwards here. I feel like you just. I feel like you just want to go for this weed. They did invent the wheel, so it's not like they weren't smart. In response. Oh, sorry. It's not me today. <laughs> Take it over, Bob. <laughs> in response to my sarcasm, Misaki looks me dead in the eye. It's the same glare she used to give me before she dragged me somewhere against my will. We are going! <laughs> and just as I predicted, she takes hold of my arm, pulling me towards the direction of the expo. Kids, Aunt Misaki was quite a ball buster mm. back in the day. <laughs> What? What about the others? Oh, I'm sure they're full. No need to worry about them. I'm worried about them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is where we did like laser tag, I thought. Or was huh. this the uh, the other? Oh, this looks like laser tag. Yeah. This looks like laser tag and one other thing. They have like three backgrounds. <laughs> <laughs> Once we dart into the building, I immediately notice the area is way too crowded for my liking. I'm just gonna throw this out there as the narrator. If we start talking too much, you can talk over us. Oh no, you're fine. <laughs> a stream of people push their way through the check-in lines, eager to receive admission. The scene is reminiscent of a herd of wildebeest flocking a waterfall. I glance back to check on the our group, but they're nowhere in sight. I think we've lost the others. Good! With them gone, we have a better chance at winning the lottery drawing. That's mean. I don't, I don't know if you've noticed, Miki, but the odds aren't exactly in our favor. You must first play the game to win the game, Yama. <laughs> that sounds like something a gambling addict would say. <laughs> Ignoring my comment, she quickly takes her place in line. I'm a little surprised she doesn't force her way to the front. 
Luckily, it isn't long before we're called next. The attendant prompts us to hold out our wrists, giving us a pair of metallic wristbands, and printed on them are a set of numbers, which I presume are for the drawing. Or for your death. <laughs> oh, God. Mm. I take another hesitant glance around before entering the expo. There are way too many people here. Do you want to hold hands? What? Why? To prevent us from being separated. Why else? Uh, um... Without waiting for an answer, Misaki inter- intertwines her slender fingers around mine and quickly leads me through the crowd. I didn't consent to this. Mm. This feels familiar. Her firm grip, her brisk pace, her resolve despite my hesitation. After Someone's all, getting off on this. <laughs> <laughs> After all these years, Misaki hasn't changed at all, has she? She's still the same zealous girl who would drag me anywhere she went. A sense of nostalgia causes me to grin. Honestly, I've missed this. Mm. Misaki suddenly stops dead in her tracks, breaking me from her remin- from my reminiscence. This looks interesting. She stands before a large rack displaying an array of particular looking goggles. Do you mean peculiar? Oh yeah. There's an exaggerated curve to their lenses, making them appear bulky. After examining them for a moment, Misaki grabs a pair and tries them on. They practically cover half of her face. I'm barely able to uh, to stifle a snort. What is it? See for yourself. I don't want to. Mm. Oh no, are we gonna go into some VR? Oh god. I think so. The Matrix is collapsing. She removes her goggles and slips them onto my face. They feel awkwardly large and must look equally as ridiculous. There are three video monitors displayed inside the, of the goggles lens, giving me a, a panoramic view of my surroundings. I feel Misaki's hand brush against my cheek as she adjusts something on the side of the goggles. As she does so, the camera zoom in and out of focus. They're called dragonfly lenses. They're sort of like panoramic binoculars. They're kind of impractical to wear, though. I remove the goggles and hand them back to her. She twirls them between her fingers, inspecting them closely. Maybe they were built to be sturdy. I guess that would make sense. Then let's try it out, shall we? Misaki draws back her arm and suddenly hurls them on the ground. <laughs> Thankfully, they don't seem to break, but I can't help gasp in surprise. Uh, wh- what the heck do you think you're doing? I just wanted to see if they were sturdy. <laughs> you didn't have to smash them on the ground, Miki. What if they had broke? Then we would have been in deep trouble, wouldn't we? This girl. I swear she does these things, these kinds of things just to mess with me. Before I, I can express my annoyance, a nearby commotion grabs my attention. I wonder what that's about. With mouths agape, a group of people are fixated on a large object hovering a few meters above their heads. It zigzags haphazardly in the air as it comes dangerously close from colliding into them. Oh god, it's a drone. Oh god, it is a drone. (laughs) From where I'm standing, it almost looks like a drone? Watch out. In one swift motion, the drone changes its course and flies straight towards us. I'm barely able to push Misaki out of the way as it spirals into the display rack. Shards of metal and glass of the drone slide across the floor, but the goggles remain relatively undamaged. Damn. It seems they're pretty sturdy. You started it. Are you two all right? As Misaki and I regain our composure, a woman jogs over. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Keep that voice. (laughs) Judging by her uniform, she must be one of the attendants running the expo. It's just like the announcer. (laughs) That lady from the thing. Yeah, we're fine, I think. I, I look over at Masaki, and she nods her head in, in confirmation. The woman breathes a sigh of relief at this, bowing her head apologetically. I'm terribly sorry. We are performing a demonstration, and the drone stopped responding to our remote commands. She's a base. <laughs> a demonstration! Oh, yes. Would you like oh, to visit yes. our booth? The least I can do is give you a demonstration of our tech. We're gonna fly a drone, everybody. <laughs> I'm not sure how that would compensate for almost killing us with one of your drones. Oh, what of else? Course. What else are drones for? Saki, however, doesn't seem to mind. 
Wonderful. If you two would please follow me, I'll show you the way. We're in the same spot! <laughs> After navigating our way past the crowds, we come to a stop at a large military-themed booth. It's impressive, to say the least. There are a number of electronics scattered about, but I haven't a clue what any of them are supposed to be. It's almost like someone just dumped a pile of scrap parts together and claimed it was state-of-the-art equipment. Or maybe I really am a Neanderthal who doesn't understand technology. Meh. The attendant places the drone, or rather, what's left of it, on the counter. She okay, so the drone, the military drone broke before the binoculars did. Yes. That seems like backwards. She takes a moment to examine the in inside of the machine. With a solemn expression, she mumbles something under her breath. Mm. The Akaris are definitely not going to like this. Oh, what do the Akaris ever like? Did I just hear her say the Akaris? Oh, God, we're an Evangelion. Um, excuse me, do you mind telling us about them? About who? The Akaris. Oh, they're part of the Lemus Gates Board of Directors. The expo is sponsored by them, believe it or not. I don't believe it. Mm -hmm. The Board of Directors of Lemon Skate? If Yahiko is actually related to them, then why aren't most of the, most people aware of it? Well, who would believe Yahiko of anything? <laughs> Unless they don't share a, a lot about their personal lives with the public, that seems very plausible, actually. Are you two ready to see something interesting? Before I can think more on it, the attendant props a large tablet on the counter for us to see. She expertly swipes her palm across its surface, resulting in an assortment of colored patterns that dance across the screen. The patterns gradually warp into the digital face of a man. Terrifying. <laughs> Misaki gapes at it admiringly. This is Max. Say, hello, Max. Fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> hello. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. In contrast to its appearance, the, inner, the inflections of Max's voice sound very human-like. I am human! <laughs> it's almost a bit disconcerting coming from something that looks so artificial. I am human! Bring me your woman! Yeah, Max is one of our newly developed AI programs. I am smartest! AI, as in artificial intelligence? No, AI is in the steak sauce. Mm. Correct. <laughs> the steak sauce. A1. That is A1. <laughs> While we've made some advancements in the last few years, we've been scratching the surface of what's possible with AI technology. So much is possible! Max is the product of that research so far. I am product. By me. Misaki's <laughs> eyes brighten in excitement as she examines the machine so closely. What was he created for, exactly? Created? Who created? Mm. What? Am I here for? <laughs> He'll serve as an automated assistant for law enforcement in the future. That is a thing. I guess I don't get lines as Max. An assistant? Max collects massive amounts of data from various sources and uses information to determine suspected crime criminals. It's a minority report shit. <laughs> he would then relay his findings to the user in charge and suggest what action they should take based on the situation. I am your big brother. <laughs> I feel like you are talking, like I'm not here. <laughs> Highly improbable. If anything, Max would be more efficient than humans. His judgment wouldn't be clouded by emotion. No emotions. What are emotions? Curious, Misaki reaches out to touch the monitor. I did not consent to this. <laughs> Forgive me for asking, but may I have your name? Startled by the machine's sudden inquiry, Misaki jumps back, holding it tightly onto my shoulder. You are a serial killer, <laughs> and how shall I address your partner? He yeah. directs his question at me. We're not partners. <laughs> it is nice to meet you, we're not partners. Is he purposefully being sarcastic? Are machines even capable of doing that? Oh, you better believe it, Dingus. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your cooperation. I have stored your names for future reference. Forgive me, bring me the woman. But mm -hmm. I must shut down in order to perform necessary system updates. Oh, of course. Have a good rest then, Max. The attendant probably shuts off his power and carefully places him back behind the counter. When she pops back up, she beckons us over towards the corner where a large telesc 
telescopic device sits by itself. I, I know it's gonna sound weird, but I do think if you had like a computer that talked to you, every time it shuts down, it should do the HAL 9000 dying thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is laser microphone. While they're used for surveillance, I sometimes use them to eavesdrop on my coworkers. That seems like a breach of privacy. She, she conspic conspicuously winks at Misaki as she hands over the headphones. I feel like this is violating a lot of civil rights. The attendant then aims the microphone towards one of the other booths. The device uses a laser beam that detects the sound vibration in distant objects. It then interprets that data through the headphones, allowing the person to hear conversations that would otherwise be inaudible from a far distance. Okay, sounds solid. Can you hear it? Uh, voices! Mm-hmm. Can you hear what they're saying? Misaki suddenly removes the headphones and quickly hands them back to the attendant, her cheeks flushing a bright red. What did you hear? No, nothing. Let's try something else. Penny for your thoughts? Mm -hmm. Five bucks if it's dirty. Mm -hmm. That sure doesn't sound like nothing. If I say it's nothing, it's nothing! Thankfully for her, the building's PA system ca uh, crackles to life. We are now announcing the winning numbers for the lottery drawing. If you have the number one, six, two, three, please report to the front desk. Thank you. I think that version of Siri should be voicing Max. Immediately, <laughs> Misaki eagerly checks her wristband. Looks like you were right. You didn't win? No, I wasn't even close. For a moment, she looks like she's about to cry, but then she throws her hands up in exasperation. You don't think they would, I don't think they would do that, Miki. And I was so excited to win the weed! <laughs> well, they were calling it a sandwich. <laughs> As if remembering something, she turns to me with a scary gleam in her eyes. Let me get your tickets! Uh, sure, but I doubt I won either. Regardless, Misaki quickly pulls up my sleeve. If we won. I, I don't believe it! You actually won! Well, then you ain't taking my digits! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, really? And just like that, she begins pulling me towards the front desk. I'm barely able to give the attendant a slight wave as we speed off. So we won basically a rotary phone. After <laughs> one of the staff confirms my numbers, they hand me a small box. On it, Lemus Skate's infamous company logo decorates its cover. Infamous. Yeah. Infamous. Interesting choice of words there. Honestly, it's not like I really need another phone. My current one works just fine. So this model would likely just collect dust somewhere in my apartment. As it would. It's... Old. I hand Misaki the box. She doesn't seem to decide whether she should immediately tear it open or show some restraint. Give him the box, we'll be worth money someday. Are you sure you want to give it to me? These models are expensive, you know? Oh, so you're saying I could sell them on the black market? Hmm. Isn't that why you brought me here? Well, partly, but that wasn't the only reason. Oh, oh you wanted to spy on that booth, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to spend some time with you since we haven't talked much lately. Okay. Besides, it's not like some heartless tech addict who just used you as a tool. No, that's what Max is for. Mm. I can't help but smile with that. She seems to take this as confirmation to unwrap the cell phone from its case. Oh, the camera resolution is a lot higher than my current phone. Why don't we take a photo together and try it out? Photo? Of the both of us? <laughs> camera shy, are we? I've never been, well, I was on camera the one time. That's like a different face than she's ever made. Yeah, yeah I'm uh, freaked out. Uh, <laughs> well, no, but... Misaki suddenly hooks her arm around my shoulder, pulling me, pulling me, me close. <laughs> I feel my cheek press against hers as she positions the phone for a good shot. I didn't consent to this! <laughs> Unprepared, I'm, tempor I'm temporarily blinded by the flash of light. It takes a moment before my vision comes back into focus. Yes, I'm just blind. Mm -hmm. As she shows me the picture, I can't help but cringe. Oh. It's high resolution, all right. You can see every detail of my face as I awkwardly wince from the flash. Misaki, however, looks as perfect as ever. I guess she really is cut out for the modern business, isn't she? Handing Misaki back her phone, my own phone suddenly trills in my pocket. Do 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 do. Let's unlock that shit. Let's check out what's up. Rui! 
Hey, where'd you and Miki run off to? Hello? Did you forget how to use your phone? I just report a lost child to security. <laughs> we'll be waiting near the food court whenever you show up. We'll be showing up with the police, thank you very much. Who is it? Rui, she's wondering where we went. Oh, I must not keep her waiting. After you just became friends again. Misaki yeah. takes my hand once more as we both make our way out of the expo. Yeah, let's not hold hands in front of Rui. Mm. When we meet back up with the group, oh, it's apparent happy. Rui isn't happy with me. She avoids eye contact, focusing her attention on the hot dog she's punching. Oh, like. no. Hey. Look who decided to join us again. It's not like I was given much of a choice. I stare point. Oh, no, oh, that's no. you. <laughs> I stare point pointedly at Miss Austin, but she only grins. So, are you guys up to heading somewhere else? Anywhere's fine with me, man. Long as it's fun. I shall leave the decision to you. You are the navigator of the expedition, Cap. Just lead the way and we shall follow, even to the depths of Hades. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, then. I pull up the map and give it another skip. All right. There's the nine place me. left. <laughs> one le place left Last to go. Last one. And I guess we'll just have to do that next time. Bye. 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 Hey, thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell icon for notifications. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like, and feel free to check out some of our other gaming videos, our weekly podcast, Anime Yay or Nay, or our parody series, Madoka Magically Abridged. See you next time!